March 22nd is observed as World Water Day every year by the United Nations to raise awareness about the lack of access to clean water and the sanitation crisis facing billions of people. Along with this crisis, we see the rise of deadly yet preventable diseases like cholera. The global incidence of cholera has been very low since the 1990s, barring a few countries in Africa and Asia. But since 2021, 23 countries have reported cholera outbreaks, and in 2023, that number has risen to 29. Anna from the People's Health Movement talks about the reasons behind this worrisome trend. So in uh, 2023, we have seen uh, the continuation of a very worrisome trend when it comes to cholera. Uh, so in uh, in the past year, uh, some countries which didn't have any uh, recorded cholera cases per decades uh, notified the WHO about outbreaks, uh, and this trend seems to be continuing this year. So uh, it's now uh, the number of countries where there is a recorded cholera outbreak has risen to almost 30. Uh, and so, as I mentioned, uh, those include countries which have had regular cholera outbreaks uh, occasionally during the year. So, for example, Malawi. Uh, but we have also seen uh, cases in Lebanon, for example, and that was, uh, that, was, uh, that was the first cholera outbreak in decades. And of course, what it shows is that uh, living conditions are deteriorating. Uh, and of course, there's also the influence of, uh, of climate change. Um, but essentially, it's down to having access to safe and potable water, which allows you uh, so to drink it, first of all, and then also uh, to you know wash the food, prepare the food as it, uh, as, uh, as it should be prepared. Uh, and essentially what we are seeing is that uh, hundreds of thousands of people don't have access to this very elementary uh, resource or right. So one of the one of the outbreaks that actually uh, was talked about most uh, in recent months and with good right is the death of Malawi. So uh, as we speak, uh, the, the number of deaths from cholera in Malawi has passed uh, uh, 1,300. So uh, it's it's a very large number of people that have lost uh, lost their lives to something that's uh, actually preventable with uh, with very small steps, very simple steps uh, as cholera. And now what we have seen in Malawi, just like in many other places that have been uh, notifying about cholera outbreaks, is that the health system is generally weakened uh, through years of austerity, of you know uh, savings, of not having enough staff, uh, and essentially of not having uh, enough very essential equipment uh, to for the health system to function. So, um, you know, uh, over the last three years, there has been, in the Global North especially, a very big focus on what's going on with pandemics because of the COVID-19 pandemic, of course. Uh, but the response has been very um, like uh, atomized or they have seen it as something that happens once and then you react to this one case and then you solve the problem and it's gone. But it's actually more complicated than that and cholera shows us that. So it's not about this, the single outbreak that happens and then you put out the outbreak and it's done. Uh, it's essentially about strengthening the health system so it can respond if the outbreak happens, but it should also be able to respond uh, in a way to prevent the outbreak in the first place. So for that, it's essential to have enough money. It's essential to have enough nurses, enough community health workers. Uh, and uh, all these places where we have uh, cholera outbreaks right now don't have those very essential things. So th these include uh, Kenya, the, uh, Malawi, Haiti, uh, also Syria and Lebanon, as I mentioned before. So essentially, a lot of people in the global south are uh, feeling the pressure of this. Cholera has continued to affect the poorest countries, especially those with poor social development, wars, conflicts, and other humanitarian emergencies. How important then is it to address the question of inequality when dealing with such health crises? Uh, it's essential. It's essential to uh, you know uh, address the outbreaks in different ways. Uh, so one way, of course, it's again uh, the short term one, uh, which has been again quoted a lot of the last couple of months, and it includes uh, vaccines. Uh, but then 
you know, uh, if we look a bit, uh, if we look a bit uh, beyond that, and if we look at what the UN has been saying for decades, is also that uh, the world should move forward in uh, providing access to safe, clean, and potable water for everyone. Uh, and in practice, what we have seen is that this is not happening. So there's no, no, no movement. Uh, towards achieving that goal, which was included in the millenn Millennium Development Goals, but also in the Sustainable Development Goals. So essentially what we need to see uh, is, you know, uh, very basic stuff. So just giving enough money to health systems so they can uh, purchase very cheap equipment that can uh, uh, help them deal with uh, with with patients, uh, but also you know building water and sanitation infrastructure that's uh, that that fits the needs of people and uh, allows them to live with, with dignity. <laughs>